actually sugar is playing a major role in people dying early and being sicker in their life. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we all were trained and I was trained because I'm old now. <laughs> I was trained in the era when it was fat that was the boogeyman. Fat was going to make you fat. Fat was going to cause heart disease and strokes. Fat was going to make you sick and fat. The truth is that it's not fat, it's sugar. And that I've written about a lot in the blood sugar solution, in the 10-day detox diet, in food, what the heck should I eat, in the vegan diet. I mean, you, there's plenty of out there about this sugar issue from my perspective. And the biology of sugar is fascinating because historically we only consumed about 22 teaspoons a year if we were lucky and found maybe some honey or we had a lot of berries, we get a little rush of sugar. Uh, or maybe we were like the Nep Nepalese honey hunters where they had to literally climb a tree 100 feet high with a smoking bush to get the honey out of the tree. Imagine if you had to climb a tree with a smoking bush 100 feet to get a cookie, right? But now we are living in a sea of sugar and flour. The average American eats about 152 pounds of sugar per year, per person. 133 pounds of flour per year per person. And we'll get into why flour may be worse than sugar. I'm talking about wheat flour, whole wheat flour, regular flour, any kind of flour. <clears throat> and why that is causing havoc in our biology. So you ask the question, what does it do when we consume this much sugar? Well, if you're consuming a berry here, a little bit of honey there, not a problem. Our bodies are designed for starvation. So whenever we got to see a lot of calories or a lot of starch or a lot of sugar, the body knew exactly what to do to get through the winter. It would store those calories in your belly and it would put on a lot of belly fat. And this is what bears do. I mean, I was in Alaska. I remember with my daughter kayaking a few years ago and we went to Admiralty Island, which has the highest concentration of grizzly bears. And they were fishing for salmon. You could, you could go to this one little spot. You could stand there used to humans and they were fishing for salmon and they would eat the salmon all day long and they wouldn't really gain that much weight. And then in the summer they'd go up in the mountains and they would eat the berries and they eat like literally hundreds of pounds of berries and they would gain 500 pounds. Then they would go to sleep all winter. <laughs> and basically they would become diabetic and hypertensive and overweight, but then they would just live off that all winter. The problem is we just keep eating all winter. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have winter. We basically just eat all winter. And, and so we're consuming massive amounts of calories in the form of starch and sugar that are driving this ancient pathway to store belly fat. Now, why is belly fat bad? Well, it turns out that belly fat is the fat around your organs. It's the visceral fat. It's the fat that coats your liver, your kidneys, your intestines, all this fat. It's not the subcutaneous fat or the fat on your butt or your thighs. It's the belly fat. And that fat is so active. It's not just there holding up your pants. It produces all kinds of molecules. One of them we've heard about, which are called cytokines. You might have heard of the cytokine storm. Why is about 80% of the deaths caused uh, or occur in of COVID in people who are overweight or obese? Because they are literally a a firestorm waiting to happen. Their fat cells make cytokines, particularly one called interleukin-6. And this is fuel for the fire, not just for COVID, but for all chronic disease, high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, dementia, uh, high, high, uh, kidney disease. All these chronic illnesses are the result of this belly fat, of this visceral fat, which is producing hormones, neurotransmitters, inflammatory molecules. And it, it literally, when you get the fat in those cells, in your belly fat cells, because of the way the body works with high insulin levels, the insulin lets the sugar and the fuel into the fat cells, but it doesn't let it out. So it's like a one-way turnstile on the subway. All the calories get in, but they don't get out. So basically, you shut down what we call lipolysis, which is fat burning. So you, by eating sugar, you literally shut down your ability to burn the fat off your body. Second, and I don't just mean the fat, you eat the fat off your body. The second is it slows your metabolism. Third, it actually creates inflammation. Fourth, it drives horrible hormonal changes in men and women that you know make basically men into women and women into men. <laughs> you get men with men boobs and you get women with facial hair and hair loss on their head because of the changes in the hormones that happen from the visceral fat. And then you get shrinkage of your brain and the, the hippocampus goes down. So the memory center goes down. So that's why we're calling Alzheimer's type three diabetes. And if that weren't bad enough, it also fuels cancer cells. Cancer loves sugar. So basically, you're fueling every disease that is resulting from sugar that causes chronic disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all the things that we see as we age, high blood pressure, kidney disease, and more. And so, and 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 when we when we sort of take a step back and we look at wow, why are we why are we seeing in America major advances in science? And the most money 
by a factor of two or three or four that other countries spend on healthcare. And we're seeing worse and worse and worse results. I mean, you, the U.S. has the worst COVID outcomes. Why? Because we're the sickest population. Why? Because we eat too much sugar and flour. And so people really need to understand that this is something that is within their grasp to fix and that sugar is not only harmful in the sense of, of the volumes of sugar we're eating and the, the consequences, but it's also highly addictive. And we'll, we'll get into talking about that. So in short... When you eat starch and sugar, it turns on all the mechanisms of your body for disease and death. <laughs> in short, it's going to kill you. I know. <laughs> in short, it's so simple. Just <laughs> now, but I would say, Drew, I would say that uh, Paracelsus was one of the fathers of, you know, uh, uh, Greek medicine, ancient medicine. Said he said the dose makes the poison. So is having one scoop of ice cream occasionally going to kill you? No. Is having a little bit of chocolate going to kill you? No. I'm talking about the pounds and pounds of added sugar to our diet. Every single thing in our diet has sugar in it. Your Prego tomato sauce has more per serving of sugar than two Oreo cookies. Uh, you know, drinking a, uh, you know, having your orange juice, which is supposed to be healthy, is like basically drinking a can of soda. So we really need to take a step back and look at all the added sugar to our diet. It's not the sugar we add at the, when we're cooking something. It's the sugar that's added by corporations to our diet that causes the problem. And I think that's a great place to start because so many people feel like, but Dr. Hyman, I'm not eating a bunch of candy. I don't have Twix in my house. I don't have Snickers. I don't have all this stuff that you would take. I don't eat a lot of baked, baked goods. So break down a few other things and let's start with breakfast and give us some examples. You mentioned orange juice, for example, and that's even a more challenging form of sugar because it's a liquid form, right? Now, in the context of this, again, the dose makes the poison. So we're talking about people doing this day in and day out, year over year for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And that's how we end up in this chronic disease epidemic. So walk us through the day, help people understand that even if they're not eating a lot of candy and baked goods, they're still getting these pharmacological doses of sugar as they continue to eat. Yeah, these are, these are pharmacologic doses. That is exactly right, Drew. These are, these are pharmacologic doses, massive doses that our biology has never been used to eating. And we think, oh, you know, we're not getting that much sugar. But uh, I was in the movie Fed Up, and there was a great graphic where they showed, you know, what you had for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and how all had added sugar. So for breakfast, cereal, right? We're eating cereal for breakfast. Oh, health, cereal is healthy. Even the healthiest cereal is pretty much pulverized flour, which is just like sugar. So you know, honey nut Cheerios, which sounds like a healthy honey nut Cheerios sounds healthy. It's probably one of the worst in terms of its glycemic index in terms of raising your blood sugar uh, based on data that is coming out of levels and Casey Means work with her company looking at continuous glucose monitoring. Uh, so cereal is basically 75% sugar and it shouldn't be called breakfast. It should be called dessert. Uh, and not only that, uh, what else do people eat for breakfast? They have their frappa chapa lapa lapa lattes with a million calories of sugar in there. You know, I think the average large, you know, uh, grande or whatever the vente uh, has probably a two or times the amount of sugar as you see in a Coca-Cola, for example. And we're having that for breakfast or we're having a muffin or a bagel, we're having French toast or pancakes or bread or toast. Those are all highly absorbable forms of starch or sugar that, that are just terrible for you. And then for lunch, you know, we might have a sandwich, we might have a glass of juice, we might have potato chips, we might have salad, but of course we're going to have salad dressing on it, but most of the salad dressing is full of sugar if you look at prepared salad dressings. So you're getting flour and chips and potatoes, you're getting all these forms of starch and sugar that are doing the same thing. And dinner, the same thing. You know, we'll often eat potatoes and rice and pasta and bread and we might think we're not getting that much sugar, but we're getting a lot of sugar. And then, of course, you know, if we want dessert, we're getting even more. So it's just they're all the day. And we're literally mainlining it all day long. And you know, I didn't really mention this earlier, Drew, but I'm working on a book called Young Forever about longevity and aging. And, and one of the key mechanisms of aging is our nutrient sensing systems. So we have these key systems in our body. Uh, I'll just name them, but don't get hung up on the name, CMPK, mTOR, and sirtuins, which are these master regulators of our biology and of aging, longevity, and, and they're governed by sensing the nutrients in your bloodstream. So when you have high levels of sugar, it turns on all the wrong signals. It turns on all the signals of rapid aging and disease and death. When you actually get rid of the starch and sugar and you lower those inputs to those nutrient sensing signaling molecules, you literally reverse all of the uh, kind of signs and symptoms of aging. If you love that last video, you're gonna love the next one. Check it out here. Most people, when they think of glucose, they think of sugar. 
but you should think of bread or sugar or cornflakes in exactly the same way. In fact, bread is the gold standard for measuring glycemic index. 